Welcome to another vintage fishing reel service video. In this episode, we got a pretty cool one. This is a Great Lakes Holiday 98 made in Lexington, Michigan. And um, this isn't a sidewinder uh, like you see with the Johnson and uh, the Johnson reels and the Wright and McGill free lines where the line comes out the side. This one sets on top. And the line comes out of the top instead of the front like a typical spin caster. So uh, yet another uh, different uh, configuration of, of how the line comes out of the reel. Um, this one uh, was introduced in 1956. And I don't know how long it was produced. I doubt if it made it out of the 50s. But um, some of the neat features of this one... To release the line, rather than having a thumb button, or rather than turning the handle backwards, this one, you have access to the spinner head, and you can just push down on the spinner head, and that, that releases the line pickup pin. So you can see, where is it? There's the line pickup pin right there. And then if you push down on this through the hole in the cap, that goes in, and then you wind it, and, and it comes back out. So that's really kind of cool. I'm looking forward to actually getting this out and fishing with it uh, next summer. Uh, the other neat thing about it was is you could you could um, change the position of the how the rod sets on the on the or how the reel sets on the rod, so you could have it a little bit more forward or back and that kind of thing uh, just by using this little uh, thumb screw here and then presumably I haven't been into it yet but presumably this is some kind of a drag you'd have to I thought maybe it was just thumb and you could use your thumb to a certain extent to drag but you better be careful while you're fighting a fish not to press down because then you're letting them then you're letting the line loose, but you could, you can create some drag by leaving your thumb on there gently without pushing down. So, uh, this is a really cool reel. I'm really excited to get into it, get it serviced, and then eventually get this out and try it. Looks like I've got a bent, a slightly bent, uh, handle here and here, uh, that I'll have to straighten out. But let's go ahead and get started. All right. So the cap is just a just barely twists on so there's a little knock out there and you just you know you want the hole towards the rear so you know you can press that with your thumb but it's just a slight counterclockwise turn about a quarter of an inch and then that pops off um i'm guessing that this unscrews kind of like a zebco let's find out Yep, so a counterclockwise twist, so that uh, that spinner head screws on there. And then it looks like, okay, so yes, this, this would in fact be the drag. So that's going to, if you turn that, let's see, yeah, clockwise, that's, that's going to put pressure on the, not giving me much pressure well we'll have to take a look at that I'm not get. I've got that torqued all the way down and it's it's not exactly stopping this all together so we'll have to see what's going on in there but looks like to get the spool off we've got a little clip here that has to come off okay and then okay so your spool that's pretty interesting I wonder Okay, so only part of, oh, that's just a washer. So there's a key, basically a keyed washer on there. 
So there's your spool. There's your drag clicker that cl clicks against the teeth here and the housing. And then let's see what else we got going on here. Some kind of a bushing in there. A brass bushing in there. Worry about that in a minute. This is this is interesting. So this is basically all there is for drag. So when I turn this counterclockwise, you'll see this kind of falls back down. And when I turn it clockwise, that thing comes up and there's basically just a little felt, you know, fiber-like material on there. And it just provides a little bit of drag, but not enough to really stop it altogether for sure. So you definitely would want to use that in conjunction with some of basically your thumb on the on the spinner head. All right, let's see where we go next. And maybe that just cleaning off some of that grease will help in terms of providing drag, but I doubt it. I just don't think it's a very strong drag. All right. Um, okay, so it looks like there is a side plate, and to access that, you take off this screw here, and, you know, that adjustment, or screw, or set screw for your real seat, or your real foot, I should say, and then, uh... Then you've got two screws here on the side plate. Uh, and I think I think that'll access get us into the gears there. Okay, that's what we're looking like down inside there and this little bend here on this shaft goes into this uh, top hole here so that that fit in there like that and of course this other hole is where your uh, adjustment for the real foot goes so that's got like basically a bent um, axillary shaft and I don't know I don't know uh, how exactly you get that out of there or how you would get the main gear out um, I, I assume we can get obviously this bushing out of here so there's your bushing And I just don't know uh, how we get that shaft out of there so that we can get the main gear out. So this, obviously there's a spring in there for the line release. And I can pull this shaft all the way down to where that bend comes down to the pinion gear. But I, this, this doesn't seem to want to unscrew this spindle here. And I'm not sure yeah, it might give you, yeah, I don't even know if that, I don't think that even give you enough room to get that, that axle shaft out of there. So I'm going to try taking off the handle and see what's going on there. So we've got a nut and then a locking washer. And that's not 
that's not really going to yield any more results in terms of getting that. How in the world? Unless they pressed this whole thing in there, but I just don't see... I just don't see this this piece coming out of there. And I do not want to just be monkeying around with it and then end up damaging the thing. I mean, I could probably work enough penetrant down in there to clean out in, in that main gear shaft. And I can probably clean the, the gears well enough without taking it all out, but... I just don't see any way of getting in there unless you were to take this whole thing out and and it it may and it probably doesn't screw in it probably is pressed in and the last thing I want to do is break it And it ain't moving in either direction. All of the rest of this housing is cast into place. The only way you would ever, that I can see, get that pinion gear shaft out of there would be to get this out and hope and it would create a large enough hole that you could bend that you know, move that shaft and winkle that bent part out of there and then access everything in there. But I just don't see that happening with without potentially damaging the thing. I just, I just don't want to risk it because I know I can clean this well enough to get it working like new, even though it kind of burns me that I can't get those gears and shafts out of there. But that's going to be... That's going to be it for me because I'm not going to risk damaging this thing. So I'm going to put these parts in the parts tray. And i got to get the line off of there. And uh, But anyway, I'll put these in the parts tray. Take it over to the sink and scrub it really good with Dawn dishing, washing soap and a toothbrush. And get WD-40 down in there and scrub that out the best that I can and uh, be back just like that all right let's get all the parts laid out here and uh, basically because we were not able to uh, remove the axillary shaft or the main gear I just had to basically work WD-40 down in there and scrub and scrape out the grease the best that I could. And so uh, the only thing we can do there now is just uh, is just to relubricate that. But things seem to be running very smoothly. It's just that it's kind of a disappointment that uh, I couldn't get that out of there. And I, I'm pretty sure it's because this is pressed in there and I just don't want to risk breaking it by trying to pop that spindle or whatever you call it out of there so I'm gonna live with it so we'll just uh, grease this up the best that we can and I'm gonna be pretty liberal with it in there in this particular case and pack down those teeth really good. There's no oil or hole or anything that I can see for getting down into that uh, main gear shaft, but maybe I can try to wick some oil down there. Seems to be soaking it up a little bit. So I'm going to just set some oil there and spin this around and 
let it wick down in there. And then I'm going to, let's see, I think I'll grease the outside of this bushing. And put that in there. And then I'm going to oil the inside of the bushing. Okay. Now I think we can go ahead and put the side plate on. And we just need to get that uh, and get that into that shaft up into that top oval hole there like that. And then we can button that up. All right, uh, I suppose if we want, we can put the uh, foot back on the reel. It basically has three settings in there. A center and a forward and a rear. Go ahead and put a little lubrication in the form of oil in these crank knobs. And grease because this is a spool that's intended to spin around the spindle and also act as the drag. So I'm not really going to lubricate the bottom of it uh, because I'm because I don't want that I mean we don't want it uh, being any slippier slipperier than it already is but we will lubricate the inside of the spool and set that back on there I did uh, when I was cleaning it I did uh, bend out this clicker a tad just in case it was sprung so it is making a nice clicking sound now the drag clicker um, we got to get this bushing lined up with the uh, with this flat spot and then this washer here keys into that like that And then, before we put our spinner head back on, we can put a little oil on that pin and up in here. This is kind of like the old Zebco 33 style, the really old Zebco 33. I think they had a pin like pin mechanism like that. And then we can just clockwise turn that on there. You don't have to over tighten it. And then uh, the hole goes to the rear of the reel. And I assume the rear is uh, where your drag is facing forward. And so your rear would be on the opposite side of the drag knob. So your thumb goes like that. And I can see I bent this handle just a little bit too much. Not good when you have parts left over. You might want to put this 
retention spring on there before you get too crazy. Just make sure it seats into that little groove. That cleaned up real nice. So there you have all serviced and ready to go fishing a Great Lakes Holiday 98 made in Lexington, Michigan circa 1956. It's certainly no older than 1956. Might be a year or two newer. But a really nifty reel. I just love to see during this time when everybody was trying to outmaneuver the other in terms of various spin cast designs uh, just, just love that type of uh, nuance in the little reels of the time so I'm looking forward to getting this one out and seeing how it fishes